Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. This is going to be another video in AWS playlist where we are going to look into what exactly is AWS free tier account. What exactly AWS is offering us with free tier? How we can create this free tier account and how we should use it? This is basically the first step in your journey to learn AWS cloud. So let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. All right, so let's quickly go through the agenda of this particular video. So AWS free tier. So here is what we are going to do in this video. So first we will understand what exactly is AWS free tier. So if you have seen the roadmap video, we have already had a glimpse of this. I have highlighted how the free tier looks. We are going to dive deep inside that. After that, we will actually create an AWS account with free tier and we will see step by step sign up process how we can create that. After that, we will set up some billing alerts. This is very, very essential step. And this is basically to avoid unexpected bills by accidents, right? Because it is a free tier account, right? So it is not expected to get bills from them, right? By some reason, if you spin up some service, which you shouldn't, you should immediately get an alert that dude, you are getting a bill, right? So you can stop that. After that, we will look into common mistake to avoid when you are working with AWS free tier account. So this is basically the simple agenda. So let's get started. So let's talk about AWS free tier. So again, if you search with AWS free tier account, you will find this particular link. And if you go inside it, it will take you to AWS free tier. Let me zoom this a bit so that it's clearly visible. Now, if I scroll down, then it says three types of offers, right? So once you create a free tier account, it will give you three types of offers. It says more than 100 AWS products are available on AWS free tier today. Three different type of free offers are available depending on the product used. So the first there is something called as free trials. After that, there is something called as 12 month free. And after that, there are something called as always free. So let's go back over here and try to understand that. Now, if you see over here, we have something called as always free. That means these services are going to be free forever. For example, we have lambdas. For example, we have CloudWatch, right? All these services are basically free. And that is what they have highlighted over here when it comes to always free. So if I go inside it, you will find that, okay, Amazon DynamoDB 25 GB storage is always free. So if you go beyond 25 GB, you will get some charge. After that, we have AWS Lambda and 1 million requests per month are free. And this is again going to be always free. After that, we have Amazon Q Developer. After that, we have Aurora DB. After that, we have CloudWatch. Inside CloudWatch, 10 custom matrices and alarms are always free. After that, we have CloudFront. So 1 TB of data transfer from CloudFront is free. You will find all these details over here. So basically 1 million SQS requests are also free. So this is basically the category where this many number of requests or this many number of size of DB will be always free. After that, you will have to pay some money. But from my experience, this storage is enough for you to learn what we are doing. We are learning, right? We are not creating any industry level application and deploy it and have our customers on there, right? We are not going to do that. We are just going to learn it. And we are going to shut down services as soon as we learn them. If we are not using, we will shut down things, right? We will delete the unnecessary resources. So it should not charge us a penny. After that, we have something called as 12 months free. So there are few services which are only free for 12 months. If I click on this thing, then you will find that that 750 hours of EC2 storage will be free per month only for 12 months. After 12 months, even if you start an EC2 instance, it will charge you a money. And let me tell you, EC2 is very expensive. After that, AWS S3 5 GB of standard storage is free for 12 months. We are not going to use more than 5 GB, so don't worry. After that, we have Amazon RDS 750 hours for 12 months. So these services will be free for 12 months. And after 12 months, they will charge us some kind of money, right? And at the end, we have some services which are on trial basis. For example, if I click on this particular thing, then you will find that we have SageMaker AI, AppStream, LightSail. These are few advanced AWS services which are available on trial basis. So if you want to try that, you can get a free trial for two months. So first we will go through all the other service like compute, database, storage, containers, right? After that, we will come to this one, right? These are not immediately required for you to learn. So first we will learn the basic stuff and then go to advanced one. So that is basically three type of services that AWS offers. Now let me go back over here. So we have seen what exactly is AWS free tier account, what they have to offer and how we can use that. After that, let's create a AWS account. So 
So let's go back over here and let's click on create a free account. Let's go over here. So it should open a sign up page for us. It says sign up for AWS account or you have another option saying sign in to an existing AWS account. So most of us will not have any existing account, right? So what we will do, I will just add my email ID over here. There we go. So this is basically my email ID. After that, you need to select a name for your account. So for now, I will simply say code snippet and I will just click on verify my email address. So after that, they will send you a verification code. So let me quickly log into my Gmail. I have copied the verification code and I will just say verify and they will ask us to add some password, right? So what I will do, I'll quickly add some password for me. So let's go to next step. After that, what do we have over here? What do we have over here? So it will ask, how do you plan to use AWS? So click on personal usage because we are going to use it for personal purpose for our own account. And you will see that there, this is basically free tier offers, right? This is what it is going to offer us with this account. Full name, I will add this particular name. I will add my phone number, select India as my country. After that, I have this particular address. This is basically my address. You can add your address and click on I have read terms and conditions and go to next step. After that, they will ask you some billing information. So if you see over here, it says we will not charge you for usage below AWS free tier limits. We may temporarily hold up $1 USD as a pending transaction for three to five days to verify your identity. So this is for identity verification. And if your usage is below this particular AWS free tier limits, you won't be charged a single penny. This $1 also they will give you back, right? So it's not a problem. What I will do, I will just quickly add my information. So once you add your information, you can just say verify and continue. And once you are done with that, you will get such form at step number four, where they will ask you some details. For example, primary purpose of your account registration. So click on personal use. After that, ownership type, choose your ownership relation to the account. So here go ahead and select individual. And ownership type, once you select individual, again, it will ask you for some details, right? For example, it will ask you for your date of birth, your PAN card information, you'll have to upload a copy of your PAN card as well. So what I will do, I'll quickly add the details and go to next step. So I have filled all the details, I have attached the file and I have clicked this that I consent to allow AWS to use this information for whatever purpose and identity verification stuff. Now again, they will do some verification. So, so I believe again, they will send a OTP on our mobile number. So I will just, I will give my mobile number over here. Once I do that, they have sent me a verification code. And at the end, you will need to select your plan, right? For example, we have basic support, which is free. After that, we have developer, which is 29 per month. After that, we have business, right? But for now, we are going to select free and I will just say complete sign up. Once I do that, it says congratulations. Our account is basically created. No problem, right? So once you do that, you can just go to your AWS management console. So if I click over here, it should take us to our console. So there we go. We have landed on AWS console for the first time. All right. So let's quickly have a tour of your AWS console. For example, recently visited services will be available over here in this chunk over here. After that, you will see whatever applications which are running inside different availability zones, right? What is availability zone? We will see later. But here we don't have anything running. So it is basically zero. After that, all the cost and usage you will be able to see over here. And if you want to go to any service, you can quickly search it over here. For example, I want to go to S3. So I click on this and it will take us to S3 console. So this is basically S3 console. And I can just go ahead and create a bucket from here. I will select all these things. If I say create bucket over here, in the right hand side, probably you will not be able to see it because I'm standing in the middle. So if you see over here, if you click on create bucket over here, it will just create a bucket for you. So it's basically a quick overview of your AWS console and other things we are going to look into as and when we look into other services, right? So we have successfully created our AWS account. Now, next thing what we are going to do is we are going to set up some billing alerts so that if there are unnecessary bills which are going beyond certain limit, you will get alert, right? So let's go over here and here we can select and here let's search for billing. Let me click on billing and cost management over here and let it load. 
So this is basically your billing and cost management, all the cost related stuff you will see over here, right? And if you go down over here, you will find something called as budgets. So your monthly budget you can set up over here. So if you see over here, AWS budgets, set a custom budgets that alert you when you exceed your budgeted threshold. So this is basically for alerting purpose. So we will just go ahead and create a budget over here. So here budget setup, you can use a simplified template or you can customize whatever you want, right? So what we will do, we'll just use the same template that they are giving us. And what we will add over here, zero spend budget. I don't want to spend any money. So create a budget that notifies you when your spending exceeds 0.0.1 dollar. Single penny, if they are charging you, you will immediately get a notification. So we will keep the name as same. After that, we will add our email ID. So I will just add my email ID over here. So there we go. I have added my email ID and I will simply say create a budget. So this particular budget is created, right? And if I go inside it, so here you will see that amount used is zero dollars. So we are not using anything now. And let me tell you this particular alert that we are creating will not charge anything, right? This is basically free stuff. So if I go inside it now, you will see that current versus budgeted. So we have one dollar as budgeted. Current one is zero. So no alert basically. So threshold is okay. And if it goes beyond that, we will get a mail on the given email ID. So it shouldn't be a problem anymore once we set this particular alert, right? So we have created our budget as well. So no problem. So setting up billing alerts is also done. After that, at the end, let's talk about the common mistakes to avoid when it comes to using your AWS account. So first thing, skipping billing alerts. Never skip billing alerts. We have set it up. So you should also go ahead and set it up because it, this will avoid the risk of accidental charges, right? Always set up the cost budget with email alerts. So we have already done that. So it's not a problem for us. Using large EC2 RDS instances. So we should always use free tier eligible types only. There are few types of EC2 and RDS instances. We will only use which are eligible for free tier. After that, next is related to root user. Basically, root user have a lot of permissions, right? So you should create a IAM user for daily activities, right? In order to connect from your application, we will create a IAM user. Forgetting to stop and terminate resources. Never forget to stop the resources. If you are creating an EC2 account, never leave it running, right? Because it will exhaust your monthly quota and after that it will charge you a lot of money. So always delete that once you create it. So this basically applies for all the resources. Storing large file in S3 because this guy only provides 5 GB storage for free. So don't store a hell lot of large files there, right? After that, we have a missing activation email. So once your account is ready, you will get an email. For example, if I go over here, I should have received an email. So if you see over here, we have got this sign up confirmation that thanks for signing up with AWS support basic. After that, don't choose a paid support plan. So if you remember while choosing a plan, we have selected the basic support plan. So always select basic if you don't want to pay money. If you want to run a business, go ahead and select whatever plan you want. After that, always monitor usage. Go to your billing dashboard as we went to our console, this particular billing and console management, you will find whatever cost is associated with the spends you are doing, right? So always monitor that and track your usage monthly. So these are basically common mistakes you should avoid while using your AWS account, right? Mostly whatever we are going to do is basically free. So you don't have to worry at all. But this is for the accidents, right? This is this alerts and stuff is for accidents that may happen when you accidentally spin up some service in AWS account. So we have seen that one as well. So there we go. We have created our AWS free tier account and we have also set up our basic alert for our spend. Now what we can do, we can go ahead and play around with this. We can, we can create services we want, connect it with your Java or any other application. So this is going to be fun and next few videos are going to be fun again. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to Code Snippet right now. That's it for this video. If you like the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to Code Snippet. Share this video with your friends so that they also have idea about how to create AWS free tier account and how to use that. That's it for this video. See you in the next video.